The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You play as Link, the initially shirtless hero who can go shirtless and pantless throughout the entire game because he has no modicum of modesty as long as you don't. He will do anything as long as someone is asking him to. So he's kind of like a pushover with a big heart. It's more like big fart. It plays like Dark Souls and it feels like Skyrim. But remember in Skyrim when you get annoyed with an NPC you could just Run And then they're gone. They're out of sight, out of mind. In this, if you get frustrated with somebody, you just have to deal with them. It's just like real life. But I don't play this to simulate real life. I want to do what I want. And people react to you swinging your sword around, but it doesn't really go anywhere. They're so close. They're so close to letting us be evil. But no, heavens forbid if Link was the roguish type. I mean, I can't see him stealing from a shop. Oops, that already happened. With the addition of remote bombs and stasis and strategically placed explosive barrels and rocks, combat can become this strategic, planned out assault. Oh, yeah, you can just go run up and beat him up. Whatever floats your boat. If you want to play it like Kingdom Hearts, press X. You win! That's what this game has more than any of the other ones. Actual strategy for these fights. It is such a breath of fresh wild. Let's talk about Zelda for the briefest of moments. I know you guys might like her, because it's the legend of her. And she's like contractually obligated to be in every game, but I don't like her. She doesn't really affect the plot very much. Even in all the flashbacks, she's seen as this colossal failure. But you can bet that in the last five seconds of the game, she's going to appear, she's going to give you light arrows, and then that's going to be it. Oh, no, how could I have guessed that? Oh, it's so good. How? It's such a surprise. This is a nitpicky thing about it, but I don't like the voice acting, especially for Zelda. I'm sure some nerds are creaming their jeans right now over it, though. It seems I'm the only one with a mind of my own. I, the person in question, am fine, regardless of the king's orders. Oh, oh, oh. People say to me, they say, Breath of the Wild is like the first Zelda. It's got exploration and... Uh, and I'm like, yeah, no <laughs> shit. All the Zeldas have exploration. What else you got? Well, um, you see, it's a completely non-linear experience, as if they're reading off their <laughs> mom's Wikipedia article about the game. Okay, no. In Breath of the Wild, you have, like, a fucking, like, shrine locator thing. Okay, now, do you know how to get to that one dungeon in, uh, the original? Nintendo Power... No! No! No, now you have to burn every single tree, but you can't just use a candle over and over and over again. You have to use it once per screen. Once per fucking screen. So you go up to every single tree. Oh, that one didn't work. Exit the screen. Come back. Exit the screen. Come back. Exit the screen. Come back. Burn, 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 burn. Is that what Breath of the Wild is like? Well, I mean, kind of, but in different ways. Like, at least in Breath of the Wild, you can see a wall is cracked. You throw a bomb at it, you're done. You don't waste your fucking time. What if there were invisible bombable walls in this? See, that's a contraction of the words invisible and bombable, just like they are in the original. <laughs> How excited would you legitimately be bombing every single mountainside inch by inch? You'd have to be some sort of loony! Probably the kind that's taking a picture of every single flower and tree and sword to fill that hole in your life. You, uh, got a lot of free time on your hands, huh? Please, please trade me. I want to make more videos. You can't even choose your gender in this game. It would have been the easiest thing. He has no dialogue. What kind of a name is Link anyways? It's something that you click on that might take you to a malicious website. So it could possibly be used for either gender. Look, my point is, Mass Effect came out in 2007. They had a male version and a female version of the same main character. And they voiced lines for each side. This guy doesn't have any lines. And I know what you're thinking, but, but he has a love interest. You know what? Mass Effect had eight love interests, so I don't want to hear any of that. And it was forward-thinking because there were same-sex partnerships. But Japan still hates the gays. But it's hentai says otherwise. You're giving me mixed messages here, Japan! Some of the NPCs in this game are pretty varied and interesting, just like they are in any other Zelda game. Except at this point, I'm old. I've played so many games, I've, I don't suffer from talking to every NPC anymore. I'm like, that guy's he's got nothing for me. He doesn't have a little exclamation point above his head. Talking to him is going to give me nothing. There's a couple NPCs that really stand out, and then there's some bland, blatantly hateable NPCs that you just want to, you just want to, get out of my face! That's right, you heard me correctly, two Skyrim references, because this is Zelda Skyrim. 
Except not as good as Skyrim. Oops. And I heard that collective gasp from some of you. Oh my gosh, this is the, their best seller. How could that possibly be? It's because Zelda before had a storyline. This one has a story, but it's written in crayon and held to bother with crazy glue. Without looking it up, tell me one motivation for the main bad guy in this game. Just kidding. There is none. There's nothing to look up. If you go on the Zelda wiki right now, don't do it, keep watching. You'll see that there's absolutely nothing to the plot in this game. G there's Ganon! Go, go get him! Because Link always goes gets Ganon. That's our formula. Thank you for stopping by. Please visit the Triforce gift shop on the way out. See you next time. This is unacceptable! Where are my interesting partner characters like uh, not Fee? Midna and the Minish Cap. You know, partner characters that could talk so they could kind of relay your goals and hopes and dreams to everybody that you talk to because you can't freaking say it yourself. Except you can in this game. People just tend to... Uh, telepathy you, I guess. Where's my motivation to do anything in this game? The motivation is how much fun you have. You know what? Exploring with stamina is not fun for me. <laughs> I'm glad that for you, you see it as a little challenge to make it over every mountain. I get over one mountain and I'm like, I'm not gonna do that ever again. And then you have to do it 86 more times and I say, NOPE! Cause you know what I don't need any more of? Weapons that are gonna break in five seconds. You think I wanna go through all the shrines just to get pieces of heart? No, 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 no. I need hearty durians, cause that gives me the maximum amount of health with the minimum amount of effort. And then, pfft, I beat the game. And look, I know this is a horribly cynical view of this super fun game, and I don't deny that it is fun. It's just that everyone who plays it has a clock attached to them. It's a, how long until this gets old meter For me, that was a couple hours in. When I'd experience everything the game had to offer, and then it got repetitive. It's gonna be a Korok, it's gonna be a weapon that's gonna break, it's gonna be a temple for a piece of heart or more stamina. <laughs> like I would get that. My main goal became not exploring to find new stuff, because I know what stuff I was going to find already. It was to experience the main quest and see what the story has in store for me. Death Mountain was lame, the Ritos were lame, but the Zoras and the Gerudos were the best part of this game, hands down. You should play it just for those two parts, because they were fun and interesting and they were varied, except for the... I didn't like sneaking around throwing bananas. What is this, Donkey Kong Jr.? What do you like about villains? I know what I like, and that's when they're well-written and motivated. Who's the villain in Breath of the Wild? Do you even have to ask? It's Ganon. It's Zelda, so it's gonna be Ganon. They just can't think of anyone else. Mario, it's Bowser. Zelda, it's Ganon. You better get used to it, because they're not changing that anytime soon. But this time, it's like Ganon without a thought or personality. Everybody's just like, Oh my gosh, Link, look, he's big and evil. Uh, uh, better go get him. Go get him, kitty. Go get him. Get the laser. Yeah. Get him. He really doesn't have a character arc or any build up to how he became the way he is. He's just there. Which is bad writing. Alright Nintendo, let me give you the quickest lesson to writing a good villain. There once was a circle who was bullied his entire life by squares. One day he decides to take over the world because he's tired of it and the world is run by squares. Look at how short, simple, and easy that was. There's an arc, there's a reason, there's a character development. Sure, you can have, oh gosh, big monster, go get him syndrome, but it's not satisfying. And you know what? I started sympathizing with the guy because look at some of the people that are in this world. If he's trying to destroy it, I'd be okay with that. You try to save some of these fuckers from monsters Monsters, and do you get so much as a thank you or even acknowledge that you just help them? No! You know what? Fuck this world! You know manners having Hylian bumpkins? Everybody keeps talking about new games like they're a breath of fresh air for each series. How many of these people are breathing shitty air all day? Just go outside! Breakaways are good for some series. Look at Resident Evil 4 breaking away from the awful tank controls and tight corridors in favor of super fun kicky gun action! But you can't ditch the story for some bland thing your kid threw together the day the paper was due, put it on the fridge? You can't get rid of the sexy and annoying partner characters. You can't make every NPC bland as a loaf of 56 cent Wonder Bread. Man, this bread is so shitty you can't even put anything on it. It just falls apart. Like my marriage, which I don't have. Fuck you, Wonder Bread. I mean, I guess you can do all those things. And you did. 
Bye bye story, flush. Bye bye lovable characters, bye bye interesting bosses, bye bye treasure. Combat and exploration are the only two things left and you managed to fuck up both of them! How'd you even do that? One thing you might notice about Breath of the Wild is that, wow, these enemies are uh, pretty similar to one another. That one just looks like that one, but with some, like, face paint. And that one's blue! Yeah, not a lot of differentiation between the two. One has more health and does more damage. Maybe has a different move set, but it's still the same enemy. Oh, here's a Lizzle Foles, but here's an electric Lizzle Foles. It's a Lizzle Foles that has electric things going on with it. Why didn't they make, like, a new electric enemy? Because that would have been fucking... Shut up! Here's a keys, electric keys, ice keys, and fire keys. I mean, we've seen these before. Yeah, well, you know what you haven't seen before? Guardian Senior, Guardian, and then Guardian Junior, and then Flying Whiz Gig Guardian. Yeah, there's really not a lot of enemy differentiation. I mean, look at all the enemies and bosses in Ocarina of Time that came out on the N64, like, I don't know, like 64 years ago. Compare this to Breath of the Wild's Rogues Gallery. You notice there's not a lot of enemies in this one. They're mostly just recolors, which is weird, especially in a game this huge. It's like, oh, hey, here's a Goomba, but then when you get to level 9, here's a Goomba with a bazooka. We call it a bazooka Goomba. We're not too good with names. Now let's talk about the music for a minute. Now, I like being underwhelmed as much as the next guy, so that's why I like the music in this game so much. They went to go for ambient sort of music to kind of make it fit the world better. But you're stuck listening to the same track over and over and over and over and over and over and over again for over a thing. I got chills from some songs in the other Zeldas, but this one never really left an impression on me. I'm sure there's a lot more to say about the music, but I'm not a musician, so let's move on. You want to know the real reason to play Breath of the Wild? Two words. Gerudos in high heels. Oh my gosh. Oh, and I'm sure they all have great personalities. And washboard abs! Look at that, you can crack a wand out on each one of them. What the heck is the deal with accessories? You telling me I can't wear an earring and a hat at the same time? There's not enough room on my head? Okay. Link doesn't want to walk around town and have people say, Oh, hey, you got a lot of uh, cranial accessories. For anybody who didn't laugh, let me tell you it a different way. Link doesn't want to walk around town and have people say, Hey, you got a lot of shit on your head, weapons. Your main tool for disposal of obstacles. You get three move sets: the spear move set, the sword move set, and the great sword move set. And the leaf. So the developer said they didn't want you to get attached to any one weapon. So they break. They leave you. They walk out their door, never to be heard from again. The time that we had was sweet, but then when it was time for you to break, I threw you so I could get a critical hit and also throwing damage. So yeah, weapons break. It was the developer's way of saying, okay, now they're going to experiment with all kinds of different weapons, and then they won't grow attached to any one thing, so the player won't stagnate. I totally get it, developer, but have you ever played Fallout or Skyrim? Are you ever going to use any of these things that you're picking up? No, but am I going to pick them up? Absolutely. It gives weapons this weird player-attributed arbitrary value to where we'll save something really great for the moment that we need it, and then that moment will just never come. We will save it until doomsday, and then all of a sudden we're at Ganon, and we're like, well, I might as well use the Master Sword anyways because it does more damage. Because the Master Sword recharges, so it's a sword that essentially never breaks. So once I had it, that's all I used. Sorry, Zelda developers. Let's talk about armor. Your armor is closed, the end. Just kidding. So as you collect or buy your armor, you can upgrade it at any great fairy for the cost of a partially skippable cutscene and some materials. Oh, and the rupees that you pay her initially to open up her uh, store. So yeah, you give her the materials and then she just sexually assaults you and then you get new clothes. Gosh, now I know what it's like to be married to a basketball star. Alright, I don't know if that's actually true. Wait a minute. When I swim normally, with the Zora armor on, I still lose stamina. But I could do the salmon going upstream to breed shit, and I don't lose any of my stamina? Are you kidding me? But no, it's a magical effect. I'm gonna magically affect this game out of my Wii U and put it gently back in its box. Unskippable cutscenes are annoying, Kingdom Hearts. But a load of 
partially skippable cutscenes are just as annoying. I'm talking about cooking, I'm talking about the blood moon, I'm talking about the great fairy's upgrading process. Cooking is the worst offender when you have to select all your ingredients like a choosy hipster at a Whole Foods. And you can't do this in bulk so you have to do everything individually. Watch the great fairy blow on you for 20 minutes. And get another crash course in the blood moon and interrupt whatever you were doing game doesn't care. And you know what? I don't care either. I'm gonna press every all the buttons until this scene skips so I can get back to my adventure. I know they have to refresh the world. I get it. But there's better ways to do it than this. Add some flavor. Here, here's a better way. All right, the screen darkens. You see the moon for just a second and hear Ganon's laugh <laughs> as it fades to black. And then boom, you're right back to your adventuring. You get the point of the blood moon, you have that little ominous, oh no, it's Ganon, and then boom, it, it's over. It would add flavor to the villain that has no personality otherwise, and it would bring back some of the dread that we felt in Simon's quest, you know, what a terrible night to have a cutscene. All right, let's get cooking. All right, cooking with Link, here we go. Add a fairy in there, monster horn, giant toenail. I don't even know what this is, but let's toss that in there, and voila, it's a dick. I know, it's censored so you don't know it's a dick, but that's absolutely what it is. Thanks for watching how it's made. Alright, so because they gave you the ability to heal whenever you feel like it with a million meals that you can carry, they made the enemies do insane amounts of damage. So your meals give you effects, anywhere from increasing your attack power to defense power to giving you temporary bonus hearts. That's the best one. To do this, you gather ingredients while you walk around Hyrule, and then you toss them in the pot. To do this, you go into your menu, choose each and every ingredient individually. You cannot make meals in bulk. Why would you want to do that and save time? Carefully read the descriptions and pick one by one. Toss it in the pot, watch the cutscene, skip the cutscene, boom, there's your meal. Do that 25 times until your cooking f inventory is full. It wastes a lot of time that you could otherwise spend adventuring in this gigantic world that they put in. I'll give you an example. Let's say it takes me 20 seconds to get all the things that I need for a meal, and that's being very generous. And I have 25 open meal slots. 20 seconds times 25 is about two hours of my time. It's like two hours I could have jacked out. I could have gave food to a homeless person. I'm not gonna do that. Maybe the first one. Don't look at me like that. My time is important and I use it for the important things. And now, for the first time ever, you can jump on command. So you know what it's time for? It's time for you to remember the old Zelda controls at some point and then try to have him automatically jump off a ledge and then you'll miss it and die. Come on and slam into the ground. Ah, eat an apple, you'll heal right up. Finding a lot of weapons that you can't currently carry? Well, have I got a treat for you. As you explore around this big ass world, you'll see places that look out of place. So you're like, oh, okay, maybe there's a cunion ring that'll give me a seed and then this guy will shake his maracas and suddenly I'll have more inventory space. For just three twenty nine. Welcome to Zelda. So like you see this circle of stones and you're like, okay, I, all I gotta do is put like a rock and complete the circle. So you go over, pick up a rock and Jesus! It wasn't a rock. It was a rock monster. So you've got your meals and you got your spicy elixirs. They do everything from healing you to giving you damage resistance, heat resistance, lightning resistance, basically resistances. The problem is that elixirs aren't very good. Basically, you have the option to brew elixirs with monster parts and bugs, and they're just awful. Because you can make a meal that has a better effect and get health or stamina back as well. Plus, monster parts sell for a delightful amount, so it isn't worth your time to brew an elixir that might help you eventually when you can just use that slot for a meal that at the very least you can use for heals, if not for its effect. So what's the buzz on this game? What sets it apart from other Zeldas in terms of items? Well, in the first few hours of the game, they give you all your adventuring tools right off the bat. You got your remote bomb, so you can blow it up only when you want to. You'll still probably end up blowing yourself to hell. It's happened to me, it's happened to everybody. You have a big magnet for moving metal shit around. You have your Prince of Persia time stop that takes forever to recharge. And, uh, you have one more. Gosh, what was it? Oh yeah, the stupid ice power that lets you make blocks. 
Everyone forgets this one because water is fucking lethal in this game and nobody goes near it if they can help it. Then you got your little tablecloth that you used to sail around with. So once you have all your basic adventuring tools, that's it. Wait, what? What about the hook shot and the boomerang and all that? Well, I mean, you can find a boomerang, but it's just a normal uh, weapon and it breaks. Hookshot would have been nice to help you get up stupid ass cliffs without using stamina, but uh, tough nuts. Every time I talk about the worst part of this game, I go on a rant, so can you help me out here, see ya? Just kidding. Just kidding. It's gone and you're sliding right back down that mountain. See, I knew it. Every time I talk about it, I get mad. More like out of breath of the wild. More like out of shape, Link. More like take a deep breath before my blood pressure goes through the roof talking about this again. Alright, for all you wiggity wazzity whiners out there that think stamina is the best thing since sliced toast, you're probably saying, well, without stamina you can run forever, you can climb quickly, and you can swim without drowning. Where's the fun in that? Did you hear what you just said? Are you a masochist? I knew it! Scooby-Doo and the gang figured it out, Blue's Clues. Alright, here's an idea for you. Instead of making stamina absolutely necessary to do basic tasks like swimming and climbing, make stamina the integral part of making that go faster. So you can jump, but you can only jump so many times, and then he gets tired, and then he has to slowly climb until his stamina comes back, and then he can jump again. Still annoying, but it's not as annoying as getting halfway up and then sliding your ass back down and starting all over again. And that is nowhere near as annoying as swimming and dying from doing it. It's obvious that he can swim. So why does he just drown when he's two feet away from the shore? He's literally right there with his feet touching the bottom like <laughs> dead. I guess I was just harsher on this one because I wanted more out of it. You look at its predecessors, how good the stories were, how good the gameplay was, some of the fun items that you got to use. I put a lot of hope and expectations into this one and it was overhyped. The gameplay, exploration, it got old fast for me. The story was non-existent, or at least it was very, very poor. I even got sick of the atmosphere, the world building. It felt like they created the world first and then put in all the stuff later. Everything's just so far apart and spaced out, and getting around this world isn't fun. If they put in a couple better ways to get around this world, it would have been so much better. Maybe like a salamander that can climb up walls. Remember Avatar The Last Airbender, Zula riding that thing around? Yeah, I want one of those! Or like a bird you could fly on. Or like bird wings to flip flap. I don't know. Point is, the world you made isn't as fun as you think it is. And look, if you're gonna give Link an ancient, not ancient iPad, you could at least give us something from the medieval times. A fucking grappling hook! The DLC sucks, and I can summarize it for you really easily. Here we go. You gotta do another shrine. What? Do another shrine. No, do another shrine. Fuck! Do another shrine. 20 bucks. Do another shrine. Stop it. Do another shrine. Why do we let Nintendo get away with it? Thank you, thank you. You can get that on iTunes. <laughs> No, but seriously, the DLC doesn't let you go to any new areas. It's the same areas as the world map, and it adds nothing but mini challenges and shrines. No new characters. It polishes up the turds that they made out of their fucking original characters, but mm, you can put gold plate on a turd, it still smells at the end of the day. Especially Daruk. Ugh. The cutscenes that you get really don't add anything to the overall, I hate to call it this, but a story. <laughs> I couldn't even finish it with a whole <laughs> Seriously, it felt like anybody could just make this if they had Source Filmmaker and the in-game models. I'm pretty sure anybody could have made a better story. The only difference is Nintendo makes you pay 20 bucks for it. What I wanted was new weapons, new armor, maybe some shit that didn't break, but what I got was a fucking tricycle! And by this point in the game, I'm already done. There's nowhere else to go. I could go around and get fucking Korok seeds, but I'm... Dude, I'm done! I beat all the dungeons! I could be Ganon and see the 
horrible ending again. I wanted to see Old Lady Zelda, but they were like, no, it doesn't fit with the brand. She's still young. She'll be young forever. God damn, Japan, with your lolies. I can tell you exactly what the DLC was. It was a part of the main plot. It feels exactly like that, but they cut it out at the last minute to make it DLC so they could sell it for a few extra bucks. Why do we let Nintendo get away with it? In the end, it's a good game. It's just not a good Zelda game. But it's still fun to play, especially with friends and family. Yep. Fine, he's just knocked out. He 